Сам бай цаган ухан дүйдзэг чтэй. Нөөдөр мана де факто нэг түүлгийн зочноор Раф Грейс Джиу Джи Цу Монголия. Энэ бай голгийн Монголийн түлөөн Монголийн хан ойдардагч, юрүүг хэлэгч Дэвид Глахан орлсч байна. Дэвид Калхан Ralph Gracie Mingulia Academic үүсгэн байгуулагч, жудогийн харбус, жүү жицүүгийн харбус, таун дантай профессор Дэвид Клайхан Ralph Gracie Biology Academy-ын захирал тус академийн 400 жарн тамирчинтай. Ralph Gracie Mingulia Academic үүсгэн байгуулагч нийт 150 тамирчинтай Улаанбаатарт 7 буудлын эцэст гэр хорооллолт байдаг ашгийн бус байгуулга. 6 жилийн түүхтэй мөн тэрээр барилгын болон үл хөдлөх хөрөнгийн Coldcard Construction Company-ын захирал. Good evening sir. Good evening. Welcome to Mongolia. Thank you very How much. How many times is it? Oh my gosh, I think over 12 or 13. Okay, 12, 13. So, how you get uh, connected with Mongolia? So, I have a I have a Jiu-Jitsu academy in Berkeley, mm-hmm. California. Mm-hmm. And uh, We've we've had some for a while we started having some Mongolians come through mm-hmm. and training with us. Mm-hmm. And I became friends with a couple guys mm-hmm. and one of them brought me over. And uh I I also trained judo mm-hmm. and I used to wrestle with uh some of the Mongolians at our club. Mm-hmm. And so I've just always had a interest to come mm-hmm. and see. Well, before we go into uh Jiu Jitsu as a sport. Uh, please tell us about this name, Ralph Gracie. Ah, Ralph Gracie. He's part of the Gracie family. It started out with uh, during the 40s, uh, Carlos Gracie Jr. and uh, Helio Gracie. They learned jiu-jitsu from a Japanese uh, uh, person who moved to Brazil. Uh-huh. And they really made it very popular. They refined the jiu-jitsu, they made it uh, very technical and for street fighting. Wow. They they changed they added a lot of technique. They really mm-hmm. refined the technique. Mm-hmm. And th- basically they had lots of kids and mm-hmm. all their kids did jiu-jitsu. Mm-hmm. And so they their kids had lots of kids. Mm-hmm. So Heli, uh, Carlson Gracie mm-hmm. had uh, quite a few sons. I don't remember the exact number, 11 maybe and one of them was Hobson Gracie uh-huh. which is Ralph Gracie's father uh-huh. so the Gracies have been passing this jiu-jitsu down to the family through the mm-hmm. family for many years and mm-hmm. it just gets bigger mm-hmm. and better as mm-hmm. it's been mm-hmm. uh, as it's been going along mm-hmm. so jiu-jitsu tell us about the characteristics of this sport why it is so popular Well, What makes it so popular and people love it? Jiu-jitsu and judo are very similar in some ways. Uh-huh. Really the rules are what dictate how you're going to fight a contest. Mm-hmm. Uh, the rules in judo emphasize a throw. So standing is very important. If you get an ippon, you win. In jiu-jitsu, it's more about originally about fighting about how to survive a fight and to dominate somebody mm-hmm. and its emphasis is more on a submission mm-hmm. making somebody tap mm-hmm. so the rules in jiu jitsu are in the old days there was none so it made it very important to be very detailed mm-hmm. people would fight there was they were allowed to eye gouge they were allowed to do everything mm-hmm. um is that means it has connected with ufc yes exactly the uh, hoist gracie uh-huh. house cousin uh-huh. is one of the uh, is one of the founders of the ufc he brought mm-hmm. it over to the united states mm-hmm. in the, about 93 94 i think mm-hmm. and they challenged everybody from all over the world and they were able to defeat all of his opponents and Hoist Gracie is about 175 pounds and he was fighting guys 280 pounds. Mm-hmm. Uh, so still he, he's winning. Still he wins. So mm-hmm. he proved to the world that jiu-jitsu is very, very strong. Mm-hmm. Since then, jiu-jitsu has grown mm-hmm. and it, it has become very popular and it, 
there are millions and millions of practitioners of jujitsu mm -hmm. around the world now. How many children now, or how many total sportsmen in Mongolia, and how many of them you are related to? So, in Mongolia, it, it's I have no idea how many now. Okay. There are so many. It okay. has become so popular. But when I started coming here uh -huh. around 2010, uh -huh. 11, there was probably it was mainly judo players that were starting to train jujitsu. Uh -huh. They saw how good, how strong it was, and they wanted to learn. Uh -huh. So that they, I would come and I did some seminars. I would teach, and I did, just having a good time, uh -huh. just hang, hanging out and sharing jujitsu with everybody. Okay. We have an association of Jiu-Jitsu, or it is just your organization in Mongolia? No, no, you have a very big organization. It's the oh. Mongolian Jiu-Jitsu Federation. Okay. And uh, are, you, are you part of it? I'm a vice president, okay. more of an honorary vice honorary president. Honorary vice president. Yeah. And um, so uh, what is unique about you is uh, you made in uh, a northern suburb of Ulaanbaatar, Dalong Bottle. Uh, a club yes. where low-income families, children spend days. It's become very popular. Tell us about the story, when you have studied, so why it is there. So about s seven years ago, we were talking about opening an academy in Mongolia. Every, they were ur all my friends were urging me to put a, a dojo here. Okay. And they were... They wanted me to do it downtown, uh -huh. like in a busy area. And I really, you know, me and my wife, my wife is Mongolian, by the way. She's a big impact, big help with the whole program. She, she, all, all, she all a, also plays Jiu-Jitsu. She, she, she would say she has a black belt, which uh -huh. is me. Uh -huh, okay. So <laughs> she's not training anymore, but <laughs> she, huh. she did train for quite a while. Uh -huh. And now she's just helping on the on the helping with the kids and okay. the program okay uh so uh you decided not to do that in the center so of the i didn't city. want to do it in the center of the city because it, those kids i i wanted hungry kids i wanted to help people and i really didn't want to charge i don't want to try to make money here what i wanted to do was to be able to help kids and it, so is it non-profit free of charge nobody pays well, no, okay. No, none of the kids pay. Okay, so you you invested the, the in the new building, or I invested in. Uh, we found a very nice building. We worked out a, a nice deal with the uh, landlord. Uh -huh. She helped us out for quite a few years, uh -huh. and we uh, uh, bought the mats. We bought the we got all the gis, the kimonos uh, uh -huh. for, for the, what they wear, belts, uh -huh. and we hired a a, a trainer uh, who has been he's stayed at my house. He trained with me in uh, Berkeley. Okay. He would come to the academy. He would train. I met him at the Worlds. And, I see. Uh, and he so lived with us. you have a Mongolian teacher uh, who, was, who went to Berkeley, to your place, trained there, came back, and now he's, he's teaching that guy. He's, he's also training with the guy who's in charge of the Mongolian Jiu-Jitsu Federation, okay. who's put everything together. His name is uh, Bolderden. Bolderden. Uh, yeah, very... Very, Jiu Jitsu would not be in Mongolia without him. He's, wow, okay. he's really put a lot together mm. for it. He works and very hard. How many children are now being trained? I mean, I mean, several years they have gone, probably some, some graduated, some study. Yeah, mo so most of the kids that started were very young. Uh -huh. Now they're starting to be teenagers. It's amazing because okay. I'm just watching these kids grow up. Yeah, very young meaning? Very young meaning five to nine when we started, maybe mm. 10, 11. Mm. And pretty much everybody that started is still there, unless they had to move. Okay. And uh, these are kids from this, we call it Ger districts, right? Yes. Because there is no other districts. Yeah. The kids are coming. Everybody can come or what, what is the... So we have a waiting list because we can only take so many people right now. Oh, okay. 
And that's one of our problems with the uh, the academy we have right now. Uh -huh. It's it's too small. It's it's smaller. It it we'd like to get a better facility for with showers and uh -huh. uh, like to have a little bit more of an area for studying for mm -hmm. for them to have a place to go to to mm -hmm. actually be able After to school a place to go right yes to yeah. work to have homework and then to exercise exercise hang out otherwise they have not such a chance otherwise yeah I I didn't didn't realize it when but I you're right there's there's a lot of kids I mean they travel two three hours to get there some of the kids wow it's it's really it, wow two three hours to travel yes oh, we have goodness. several kids they move away and then they just keep coming keep coming and they, they do not want to okay. give it up they, they say it's the most important thing in their lives a lot of these kids so are you, uh, are you feeding them or food no or? we we just teaching jujitsu. Sometimes you know we'll have pizza nights or we okay. do things like that. But okay. uh, it's it's a big it, it's a big job. I've been supporting it myself mm. for many years, and I and, and it's getting big right now. You're spending a lot of money. It's starting. Things are starting to add up. But what we decided to do, we bought some land uh -huh. right very close to it. Okay. And my wife right now is working on uh, Zagda is working on uh, entitling the building. To, and we're going to try to start breaking ground. We're looking to, I bought the land. We're looking to get other people to help mm -hmm. with the How big building it will up. be uh, compared with the one right now? Oh, twice the size. Twice the size. Yeah. So more flat, more, more gym place? It's or? more gym. It's, okay. We're going to build all the land out all the way. Okay. So that will be then another U.S. standard kind of uh, facility, which, uh, by the way, uh, makes a lot impact on the other structures they will make because it's a proper standard of everything water sewage everything so it's another good uh, achievements there but most importantly the kids yes how many total kids right now 150 150 yeah and with the new one you will have 300 huh? as many as we could fit in there okay and that's the, there's no you know it, there's no real limit it'll be nice because once this is all finished the money will just go to the kids only no rent no uh, other you know minor money uh -huh. will go to take care of the building uh -huh. and i wanted the building to be there forever after i'm gone and mm. it's this is going to be all donated we're going to set it up so it's going to just stay david uh sport is so important not only for health but for making kids into person right personality character and um Obviously, you yourself understood it uh, very young, I understand. What was the first time you got this idea to help like this, the other children? Well, I've always wanted to help people. I've always been... Uh, my family got me involved with donating my time when I was very young. My aunts and uncles, they brought me to a disabled camp, so I would give my time to them. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we do these wilderness disabled camps and mm -hmm. these kids will be out in the middle of nowhere. They don't know. They've never been out there before. They have to go four wheel drive. Mm. And it's, it, I saw how it changed. Just some, some small changes Where was it? impact them. It, it, it was in Quincy, California. Uh -huh. It was in the uh, middle of the Sierras. Mm -hmm. And we would sleep out under the stars and we do it for the whole you know several weeks under the out there no 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 tents just sleep under the stars no roof and these kids are all wheelchair bound and we just uh d we would just take care of them they would have like they they got a chance to really experience a normal life you know wheelchair kids yeah wow yeah and the Having something for people, you know, mm. you, Jargo, you were saying like sports impacting. It's not just jujitsu; it's any any sport. It, I see. It, it sports are so important for kids. Yes, I, I I believe it really makes a bond that'll last a long time. Gives them discipline, which we all need, especially when we're young. Yeah, in particular, the education is not only a mind issue; it's sort of your physics issue, your body's issue, which helps you to grow your mind as well. Right. Yeah. And uh, of course, uh, the countries uh, called developed when 
every child has some access to this kind of trainings, right? Yes. In Mongolia, unfortunately, we don't. In particular, half of the uh, Ulaanbaatar citizens live in Gir district, for example, and unfortunately. Those who are living in the center, the more or less they have some facilities where they can go. So that's why your initiative is so amazing. And when I have heard immediately start, I want to see that. I want to meet you and I want to, to interview this. And uh, very helpful, dramatically changing life of these young people. I saw the video where the kids are being changed. How happy yeah. are they? Okay. Uh, Thank you. And uh, I mean, how do you, what do you do for living? As you, certain money you spend like this in Mongolia. I, uh, I worked as a contractor uh, or in real estate my mm -hmm. whole life, and mm -hmm. I've, I've been a builder. Mm -hmm. I worked as, I started out as a, a roofer. Uh -huh. I just did hot tar roofing. And then uh -huh. from there I started my own company and uh -huh. I just kept growing everything mm -hmm. and started building apartment buildings. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I, real estate development has been my, mm -hmm my uh, job for the last 30 years. Okay, now what you have observed that during this training, you come in every year and you train them and they have all the belts, all the stuff. What you have observed with Mongolian children? What, what are the in different ways? Kind of? They're starving. They're starving for, they want more. They want everything they can get. They, I teach them, we teach them something, I watch them, they learn. They do things, they do things so detailed and, and it, without distraction, without, the kids in my, uh, in my area, they have a lot of things going on. Mm -hmm. So they, they get a choice of coming there mm -hmm. and it, it's, the, the difference is amazing mm -hmm. how how they really want to mm -hmm. learn want to improve and, and watching them bond with each other and become friends i it, it, these i i know that every one of these people are going to be friends for the rest of their lives it's mm -hmm. really the, the way they hang out they they take care of each other mm -hmm. and, and jiu jitsu itself uh, as a sport doing that or teaching that or how is it work? I think jujitsu teaches a lot because it's, it, it, jujitsu is like chess. It, it's, it's like mm. wrestling and chess. chess uh -huh. Yeah. It, mm. You, you have to learn, you learn one move, but your opponent is going to counter with another move. Mm -hmm. And then you have to know the counter to that move. So you, mm. jujitsu, you have to think five, six steps ahead sometimes to get to what you need. So, in a way, some sport is like if uh, you fight with somebody, you use that energy coming to you against you, right? Exactly. That's exactly it. Yeah, the why hell? fight the power? You know, if they're gonna uh -huh. if, if if they're gonna want the arm ripped out, let it go. Uh -huh. Go with it. it uh -huh. You don't you don't need to. But you however, you think that it's like a chess, uh, some five move. Yes, to, yeah. to head, because right? when they pull their arm back, they leave something open. So yes. it, it, it changes, it, every, every movement changes the game. Yep, and they, with that changes, you, the, the weight is moving. Yes. And so that you, it's, it's to use that movement of weight into the directions you want, right? Exactly, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is why I think Mongolian are so amazing at jiu-jitsu is they they grow up wrestling and yeah, every is, kid is a by they, nature mongolians are wrestlers there's there's thousands of years of genetics yeah. of wrestling in there that's and why we call it main three games yes the not, one of them is a wrestling yeah and not by chance i think this uh, in japan now the dominant wrestlers in sumo are mongolians yeah do you think that in jiu-jitsu it may be the same I absolutely could see it happening, it, and it's things are starting to change. Brazilians have been doing; they've been dominant mm -hmm. for 
for the last 50 years. You know, they've been very dominant and because it, it's their sport. Okay. They well, started uh, no, no, it, it, it. It's originally Japanese sport. Yeah, oh, yes, but <laughs> the popularity of the jiu-jitsu, like we have contests now, uh -huh. is the Brazilian style. Wow. So originally, you're right, it's, it's Japanese. It's, and the Japanese did just as well. Okay. They, and now, uh, who are dominants? The Brazilians are Brazilians. still dominant in uh -huh. it. Americans are catching up. Okay. We just had an adult world champion from Poland win. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, different countries are starting to mm. win. And the Mongolians, when they go, they, mm. they do very, very well. Mm -hmm. They dominate in all the lower belts. Any, it, you know, the wrestlers have done very well. Mm -hmm. How many belts? Uh, there's, a, there's white belt, uh -huh. is what you start with. Yes. Uh, you, you get a blue belt. Uh -huh. A purple belt ah, is like mid-range. That's okay. a, a brown belt. Brown belt. And a black belt. Black belt. So five ranges. Yes. Mm. And uh, is it hard to go from one upper? Yeah, hard hard is relevant uh, okay. because it, it's it's not. This is not the. This is not a sport where you're going to get your black belt in two years or okay. three years. Uh -huh. it, it took me eleven. Okay. Um, the average is ten. Uh -huh. But people are getting so good right now that they're getting it faster because I think uh, with social media, with YouTube, they are learning way faster than we could have learned. Uh -huh. uh, and, they're and they're able to do more technical because yeah. the explanation for the details is there. These kids of your school, uh, I saw them stretching so fun, so well. Huh? And at this age, to have this opportunity, and also teachers like you, is a great, a great opportunity for these guys. Yes. Uh, and the schools, how do you combine that? Because you take uh, plenty of time of their life a day, say 150 kids. Then how does the school consider you as a, as a helper, or as a, I mean, is there any conflict or, or any harmony? Anything. I think the schools fully support us. The kids that are doing that are all getting, they're mostly getting very good grades. Okay, okay. It's improving their attendance. It's improving. The uh, instructor, Erka, is a, is a very, very strong instructor. Mm. He's strict. He's teaching them very good discipline. So, and he pays attention to everybody out there. If there's a problem, he's trying to what help. What is the best way to have many Erkas? Uh, Get them from our academy in about five more years. There is going to be many Ericas coming out of that. Uh, ideally, we could have one in each district, one in each IMAG. I think it's starting right now because I know the Jiu-Jitsu Federation is doing uh, uh, programs in different areas with kids. It, it, they're, they, they used us as a model and they're actually, they're so happy with it. Oh, they're with starting it. to do it oh, now. What a nice news. Who is the head of this Mongolian Jiu-Jitsu Federation? Well, it, it, Boulderden is the uh, uh, guy that's more of the He's the, the, the person who is more in charge of how things are getting done. He's the, the organizer of everything. Mm -hmm. um, Munksuk uh, uh, is, has been the president for many years. Munksuk. 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 Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. And I, I, he's, I think he's working with Rio Tento. He's, ah, that Munksuk. Yes, yes. He's uh, working now. He's abroad. Yeah. He's, no, he's uh, here now. Oh, back, okay. Yeah, I just, we had dinner last night. Oh, well, the, the, he's the guy who I think really disseminated this uh, system. He's an amazing guy. Yep. Well, so, I mean, you have all... And his heart is in Mongolia. He's, he wants more people to get this kind of training. He sees how important it is. Well, that's why I really want to see your clubs all around and... Uh, Please do it, <laughs> I, I, and I would like to thank you so much on behalf of these kids. Obviously, they say said that, but I think the kids in the future who will be in your schools will be very much thankful to the job you do voluntarily, 
spending your money, your time, and your wife also doing the same job. So I would like to congratulate you and your wife for this great job. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate you taking the time out. Thank Could you. I say one thing? Yes, sure. I'd like to... Uh, we're, we're building this building and I'm looking for donations on this because right. I'm hoping that I can get some help with the Mongolian people to okay. uh, to put this building together. Yes. So anybody that might be out there that could be a, a, a cement contractor, okay. a, a finisher of some kind, uh, you know, somebody that does yes. metal, any or anybody that would like to help us, okay. it would be deeply uh, appreciated and. This building is going to be there as long, forever, in my eyes. Uh, it, it's never going to go away. This is going to be for the kids only. Yeah. So yeah. if there's uh, any way to get any how help. How to get you contact, connected? Um, I can give you my uh, Facebook. is very easy to get a hold of me. Okay, we will put down this program. Yeah, and then I also have, I'm working with Guardian Project in the U.S., which is, they're, they're a nonprofit, and they're, they're collecting for our U.S. I have Ralph Gracie there. Uh -huh. He's, I took him here last year, and okay. he just, um, he had tears in his eyes. He, wow. what, how great, he cannot believe how great, and he's taking this on for himself, too, as a, wow. as a program for his, all his academies. Sure, so I mean, he's I, going to be helping. So this is going to be officially a Ralph Gracie. Okay. Too. After after this program, certainly I believe that Mongolian schools are not contact you. Thank you. The hundred and sixty eight have been much longer than the Mongol dialects. Mongolian who have been higher time than the others. The long bottled Jiu Jitsu or Oring get club by God. The other one is not even good. Girardin hooked, so all that had a Dutch to the salt heat to give Hatter Tavodot. Dodona Mingil German. I had no wish I had Jotten Berhimben. When Bugder in Hori Homongo Hill German, Terrashing, Barrett, Barrett's Chiverling Campaign, Cement Team Book, Shatara to Strimble Bit, Odon Idling, Girhorald and Richard Abagor Doctor, Odon Idling hooked it, Sahni Radio in Nakebot and Jugger in Benshu and Harl Tower. I am here to and I am here to Ralph Gracie, GUG2 Mongolia, Bagolrig, Bagosan, Ottawa, Jungilchen, knowing David Glahan or Slo. Bella. Hamburg Dos, Hatun told Rosin, who wondered, singing a rasta was at Berlin. Both the days there, what need to do this was. Эрүүл амьдралын хэм маягийн эрхэмлэгч тавхныг King Tower Apartment-ийн хавдгаар элжин орон суудсанд өрж байна. Амар тайван амьдрал, аягийн бүтээлд шүүн 